Pimp problems. <laughs> and uh, Coach Claw, what's going on over there, brother? What's going on? What's going on? Trying yeah. to get ready for Saturdays to okay. kick off. Okay. Kick okay. off. Okay. It's a big, big, big. It's finally here. College football. Across the board, everybody playing this weekend. You know, we got a lot of freshmen, impact freshmen, uh, some guys, some red shirts, uh, a few people who, you know, they supposed to be uh, worth something. We're going to find out real quick. Uh, Coach Gator, what you looking for this weekend? <laughs> I'm just looking for some good football. You know, um, I got a, I, I got a couple of freshmen that's playing, so I'm going to, I'm gonna be tuning in. I got a couple guys playing at different colleges, so I have an opportunity to uh, see my guys play. Okay, okay. Wendy, what you looking for this weekend? I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out some of the kids. You know, they have left and gone on to college, so I'll, I'll be watching all of those kids this weekend. Okay, okay. Come club. What you got? What you got going on? Might take it down at um to Auburn. Check out Clemson and Auburn. Check them out. Got a couple guys on the field. Got to see uh, Stanton Truett. Check him out. You want to see Deshaun Watson? I mean, I want to see everybody, but that's one of my guys, though, okay. Stanton Truett. Okay. So definitely got to support him. Okay. Wait, at Auburn? At Auburn. Red okay. shirt, sophomore, receiver, number 10. Okay. How, how did he do in spring? Uh, he actually hurt his shoulder, so he didn't really participate in spring, but he coming out in the starting lineup. He had a shoulder injury last year. Okay. But he definitely be, um, and you might get to see freshman Derrick Brown a little bit, jump in from Lanier High School, jump in there a little bit as a true freshman. That's another one of you guys. One of the guys. Hey, man, these guys are putting people to school, man. When we come back, man, we're going to start talking about how GPA impacts recruiting. Get the crush, baby. We'll be right back. Yeah, did you ever get it going? With it. Did, you can't hear you here now? I can hear you. You can hear it. Yeah, well, he moved it that time. Okay, yeah. Long. Try to leave that thing alone. What? I usually, when it goes up, like, I usually hear it. We can't the same way. Yeah. We came close, okay. but never really did win that championship. Oh, you got it. Oh, you got it. I'm doing exactly right. 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 I see you got focus. I got transfers in my hand. I sit on that. You are working for me. I'm doing it today. The truth for nothing but the truth, huh? Jeez. You can't run from it. Conversations. Bring it out. Early. Got to talk to the moms. Those juniors are seniors. You got everything. Everybody. Um, these right here, 2018. Mm. And they already look got you looking like that. I mean, that one that I just showed him in that one point two four. Um, we. We got a 1.2 vote. Oh. I, like, I had to help him. We had to help him get eligible last year. That's what I did. You still have a 1.2 vote? That's what we got him up to. Thanks for asking, wow. but I'd rather not send you So this year, I go by his class, every class, like a college class. I'm chasing him. You got to sit in the front. Is he that good last year, you lady? He's pretty good, but I just, I mean, that's what I am. I told you, that's what I am. I'm running around chasing folks all day. You don't get it together. You don't get it right. How many ways can you say no? You might have to get the message. Let us know at thatsnotcool.com. Sometimes you got to take a different path. Well, I finally did it. I opened a 401k. What? Why? Just wait for the inheritance. We've definitely got a rich uncle somewhere. Well, he got to understand this. Whether you do it here or do it there, you still got to have a two five. Got to have a two five. Using summer as a verb. You don't actually think. You had a two five in JUCO. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs, the Georgia Society of CPAs, and the Ad Council. This is Tracy Hutchins with CBS. Hey, we're back. Uh, quick shout out to all the uh, sponsors that responsible for keeping the crush on air, baby. We got Cobb Football League, Dr. Kevin Dancy, Orsi Software, Blunt Power, Parish Capital, and the Ray Team, man. Appreciate you guys for rocking out with the crush, man. So, with this process, the one thing that uh, these athletes cannot avoid is this GPA thing and how GPA affects recruiting. Mm -hmm. Now, this this was funny about your GPA. 
the higher your GPA, the more options that you have. I, I don't think people really understand that. Why put yourself in kind of this bind toward the end of your high school career worried about your GPA? It, it's just like the craziest thing. So uh, let's go, we're going to get into this. How does GPA impact recruiting? We're going to start with you, Coach Claw. Talk about it for a second. And um, impacts recruiting is the top of the list. Mm -hmm. um, it can make or break if you get a scholarship or not. Um, I think parents have to understand that your ninth and tenth grade year are the most critical two years um, of the process with the GPA. Um, all of them, are, all four years are critical, but your ninth and tenth grade set the tone. So when you go into your junior year, like you said earlier, you want to ease into that thing and know where you at and have the same consistent discipline in the classroom. So you won't have to be too much worried about it in your junior year. You just got to maintain it. Okay. Let's talk about it for a little bit, uh, Coach Clifford. Yeah, like with the, the GPA, of course, like with Coach Clark saying, that that's one of the first things, you know, coaches ask. Once they see that they, they like an athlete, it's so important and so imperative that you start on that GPA in the ninth grade and getting it and, and getting it where it's, it's supposed to be, um, and I always tell I always tell my clients and uh, one of the things I said we can maintain a three point oh GP, you know, a three point oh uh, grade point average. I said that usually can get you in any. Um, you go. Hey, talking about that paper. It usually can get you in um, any uh, college. Okay. Um, now this is your area of expertise right here, uh, Miss Goldston. Let, let, let's talk about it. Yeah, so it's important. I can't even stress how important it is. Um, starting in ninth grade, I'm seeing, you know, kids and parents being okay with making C's. The problem is now a C equates to a 2.0, and that's not going to get you there anymore. Um, you know, it's 2.3 now to even get, you know, qualified to not be a red shirt. And if you are, if you're wanting a school to take a chance on you, your GPA needs to be even higher. Mm -hmm. um, we're also talking about being accepted into the school. And then, you know, again, these GPAs correlate with your scores. So if your GPA is low, what's to make you think or anyone to think that you can get a higher um, SAT or ACT score to help you qualify? Um, you know, those two should go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just can't stress enough that, you know, seeing your way out or however you want to look at it, it's not going to work anymore. You're going to have to get these A's and B's now if you plan on playing at a post-secondary school. Okay. Point blank. Because I got, I'm, I'm going to tell you all my four points and we're going to kind of talk about them a little bit. My first point about your GPA, more universities to choose from. Yeah. With the higher your GPA. Most admission officers place a great emphasis on your GPA. For athletes, the higher your GPA, the more colleges you have to choose from. And I think a lot of times these kids don't understand that, uh, again, we talk about these kids get to their junior year, their senior, especially their senior, senior year is too late. Pretty much. At the end of the day, it's just too late for your senior year. Too late. Get that GPA as high as you can Early. from the jump. So that way, because you, you become more attractive and you give yourself more options. Like you said, you get more opportunities mm -hmm. if you got a higher GPA because... A lot of parents, and I've run into this issue, they see the sliding scale and think that's an admissions process. And I, that's not the admissions process. So just because you have qualified NCA eligibility doesn't mm -hmm. mean you could get into that college. And what if your son get hurt? Now, mm -hmm. if your grades don't maintain, you still can't go academically. So the whole thing and what we do at Athletic Trust Advisors is we try to advise them on get your grades up in case you get hurt and never can play again, you still can apply at a top university and go to college for free. Mm. And that's one of the points I was saying about the 3.0 GPA. Because most, uh, e even if you're trying to get into Vanderbilt or Georgia Tech, Northwestern, most of the time if you're around a 3.0 GPA, you still can get in. Now, as far as playing, being an athlete, you know, unless you're trying to go Ivy League, you know, you got to get up there about 3.7, 3.8, 3.9. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's a different total ball game. But, but once you're... You know, if you, if you can maintain above a 3.0, you nine out of ten, probably ten out of ten, you can get in most universities uh, around the country. 
And then my second point, and, and this is for to me, your one double A, your division two type kids. With with high GPA, more money in the pot. Academic money is good money also. You're very attractive to college recruiters and coaches with this GPA. And like I say, we have a kid that we had that made a couple of years ago with last year just graduated. He's at Clark. Now, he's basically on full scholarship because what the athletic side couldn't pick up, the academic picked up. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he still got a free, he still got a free to ride school. school. Free. And he was one of those kids that, yeah, he had talent, uh, he had a good enough talent, he had enough skill set to get interest from a college. But because his GPA was around 3738, he didn't have these issues. And again, parents, if you don't know your child's GPA, you're part of the problem. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that when a parent calls me, it's one of the first questions I ask. I say, what's your child's GPA? And I, and, and I always cringe every time a parent says, well, I don't know. I think it's a 2.5 or, or I think. You know, <laughs> so think. If, if you're serious about the process, and then, you know, especially when you reach out to somebody that's going to assist you in the process, some of the things you should know. You should, show, you, you should know your son's SAT, ACT scores, or if he hasn't taken the test, when he's going to take it, and you got to know yourself GPA and his core GPA, whether it's numerical or where it's on a 4.0 scale. Wendy, I just want to ask you this real quick. How frustrating is it to not be able to run a parent down when, again, the parent has to be just as involved in this process as his, as his coach, as his teachers, as a counselor? Yeah, so... You know, getting them to understand how important it is and getting them to stress that importance to their child. Um, I, you know, I was just talking to Coach Cannon today. I need to set up individual meetings now. I mean, it's, it's to that point that I need to set up individual meetings with the parent and the child and, and talk to them about, you know, wh what steps are you willing to take going forward to make this work for you? Because you're, you're an athlete, you're a good athlete, but what steps are you willing to take at this point to keep moving forward if you want to continue to play? Because we get, we got steps you can take if you don't plan on playing anymore, Yeah. and we got steps you can take if you continue to play, but don't have me put all these things in place for you, mm -hmm. and then you don't follow through on them. Mm. We're just warming up, man. When we come back, we're going to continue this how GPA impacts recruiting. It's the question. We'll be right back. More mm -hmm. of the crush sports club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what up, though? Mm -hmm. What up, boy? What's happening? What's up, boss? What's up, boss? What's up, boss? Crushed it last night, didn't y'all? Huh? Crushed it last night, didn't y'all? Yeah. Oh, is it that hard? What question do y'all be asking that is that hard to give that away? What What we giving away? Do you, you know your son's oh, GPA? You. I said, what question is he asking that? They can say, they can say, I, only, I think we forgot to give it away, probably. <laughs> what else did we forget to give away? Uh, I said, what else we forget to give away? I'm showing some stuff <laughs> in here. Them Falcon Tampa Bay tickets we got. <laughs> no, we do for real. That's going to be a loss right now. Well, there you go. <laughs> you going? Huh? You going? Yeah, we got tickets for real. Oh. I want to go. Who's going to be at law? What's going to be at law? I was talking about somebody. I was talking about somebody post. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cowboy <laughs> Giant. <laughs> Your post is? Come on. I want to go. I know, but I can't see it. You work here, so. Yeah. Oh. Work That's not fair. I was talking, talking about what somebody said, man. I ain't saying nothing about them. Man, go ahead. I ain't saying nothing about them. I'm not, I'm not talking about them this year. I did not believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I'm just, I'm just going to put that chart up all year. Don't forget you do sports radio now. You got to be biased now. I am. That's what I'm saying. I'm very biased. Where Romo rank as top quarterback? <laughs> we can't rank right now. He hurt. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, he was hurt since 2012. Right? No, that's not true. Every year. We was a bad catch away from the Super Bowl two years ago. <laughs> Y'all seem to forget that. Yeah, we was in the NFL Championship three years ago. Right, I about to say, pass interference kept us out of the Super Bowl. That's it. Did it? I thought Colin Kaepernick, not running, kept out of the Super Bowl. A little bit of both. A little bit of both, yeah. But either way, we still was on the same plane back. Y'all waiting on him to run his own read, and he never did. 
Mm. He kept giving the ball to Frank Gore for four quarters. It's okay. We got a better shot this year than y'all do. Our specialists are waiting for your call. Call 866-855-6516. Again, call 866-855-6516. That's 866-855-6516. Periscope, college scholarships. Here we come. What was that football today, one? What was that? At KSU, that KSU? Yeah. Are you getting ready for the week? But let me tell you something. Yeah, I they so uh, I typed it at gym. They done added some more stuff to that stadium. This ain't shabby on top right here. Well, nah, it's where they play the lacrosse game. Yeah. But you know, I that's the football stadium. So yeah. But they done put some more seats in there. And uh, know, they done some more that they were packing the field. They like sad they gonna be their first night game. I don't think they should take it. So yeah, they're gonna get the program with the middle school. That's a spot. We got some other options. But go right now. Division one. So I think that's a better option for most people. They can make it and take those classes. GED is a registered trademark of the American Council on Education, brought to you by Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Hey, we're back talking about how GPA impacts recruiting. In my next point. When we talk about GPA, man, your eligibility is tied to your GPA. Your high GPA indicates to a school and university that there will not be any academic issues with you. The higher your GPA, the less stress you have with the SAT and ACT because we know that the higher your score, the you know, higher your GPA, the lower your score can be, which is like the craziest thing in the world. But again, it's a tool to keep kids out of college. People act like they don't get that. Bringing a high GPA to the table, coaches don't have to worry about your eligibility and can focus on your own field performance. Talk about it, Coach Clark. You know, like we said, we just got to set a goal. You know, the goal's got to be set. Um, and with the NCAA rule, which you spoke about, about the high GPA, what the um, lower your um, test score has to be, I think that's a in a way, a, a bad thing because a lot of parents don't understand that sliding scale. Mm -hmm. um, they see that, I think, at the top. A, B, or better. Mm -hmm. Because that will keep you at least at a 3.0, and that'll keep you from having any of the issues. If you're able to maintain a 3.0, then you're usually able to get the score that you need on an SAT or ACT. Mm -hmm. um, I just, again, I can't stress it enough. Like, they don't take you seriously. I, you, When I came in today, you said, what, what have you been doing today? I've been evaluating transcripts all day, and I've been calculating core GPAs, and it's disheartening when I'm looking at a student that's in 11th grade and I'm looking at a one point something. And I'm mm -hmm. like, how can I even get you to a 2.3 to get you on the field? But wow. at this point, I'm trying to get you to a 2.0 so that maybe you have an option of a red shirt if you're good enough. Or two, you just have an option of going some, to a JUCO and then trying to get a 2.5. But again, then we're still taking a chance. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're showing us the type of student you're going to be. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the other questions I, I, I find myself running into is parents asking should they take A B courses or should they just take regular classes? And and I and for me I kinda tell parents, I say, you know, as far as the GPA wise, I said, you know, you know your student you know your son better than I do. Mm -hmm. So so as far as I said, when when a, when a school pulls his transcript and he he's taking just the you know, the regular classes and I was like, and he has a 3.7. You know, if he's looking to get in one of those high academic schools, that's great. You know, those, I think those AP, I thought those AP courses kind of work in his favor. Mm -hmm. But you know, if, if 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 you know your son is 
not necessarily the greatest student, but if we can keep him all above a three point oh, I just say take the regular classes. Yeah. So so you so you have to so it's it's a kid to me it's a kid's twenty two. You know, the only reason why now I've also seen I always also told some of my parents if a kid is kind of because you know if you take an a, a AP course I think it's a if when if you, if you can correct me if I'm wrong or not I think you get an extra point yeah um, for the AP uh, for, for the AP course and that so if if, if, if we need to get to a, a three point oh I said take one AP course so you can get an extra point because I think an AP class is on a five point oh scale if I'm not mistaken yeah it depends on the school so you can either get a point or like I know in Fulton County we add seven points to your grade so if you make a seventy in the class you automatically get a seventy seven or if you make a hundred and you automatically get a 107 because we're on an NGA, a numeric grade average, which mm -hmm. is out of 100. Um, so to back you up and, and, and add a little bit, you know, I think if they can take AP classes, then take them. If you can function in an AP class, then by all means take it. My issue with the AP classes is a lot of students take them, and to get the whole point of taking the AP classes is to get the college credit for the yep. class, okay? Yep. And so at the end of the class in May for all of those courses, there's an AP test. And most schools want you to have a three, four, or five in order to get the credit for the course. Okay, some schools will take a three. Some won't even take a three. Yeah. Okay, depends on the school. So the, then the issue becomes, I'm not seeing the number of students making three, fours, and fives on the test, but they're getting A's in the courses. And, and, and that was gonna <laughs> be my point. Okay. Because your, your average kid, you're not gonna put them in an AP class. Right. That, that's the first thing. AP class are usually reserved for y your brainiacs. Your cream and crop. You know, so. Academically. Right. So, if, if you're an athlete and you're put in those AP classes, it's probably because you probably already ride three five, three six. And you've been taking it since middle school. Get yeah. the program. Now, if you're struggling. Right, you came in that way. You came in yeah, that now way. Yeah, now, if you're struggling, I'm not going to throw you in the AP class because you're not going to get the extra point. No way. I think it's, and I, I also tell some parents, I say, I think it's, it's not impossible, but sometimes I think it's pretty hard to try to, so most kids play two or more sports, and then also you got to maintain the, a, the AP course. So I say, you know, put yourself in that child situation. Do you want your child stressing out over AP class? I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, the, don't push for the best. I'm not saying that. But you know your child better than I do. So the good thing is now we have other options. That's the good thing. We have a program now called Move On When Ready in Georgia, okay. which means that like if you're on a semester system and you get like at Langston, we have eight classes per mm -hmm. semester. So you can take enough classes so that you're ready to take college courses your senior year, which all you do is take the college course. You made the grade, you automatically get the credit instead of waiting on one test to determine your credit. Okay. Hey. hey, when we return, we're going to wrap up GPA and then we're going to move into a very touchy subject. When is a good time to transfer? It's the crush. We'll be right back. Yeah, I'm pushing my kids to move on when ready. I'm pushing my kids to move on when ready. Move on. I think that, that sounds pretty good. I, I gotta look. I gotta look. I think the problem is, like I said, every county is the deal. Everybody has to move on with ready though, because so this is the thing. Schools push, and I'm gonna say this when we get back on. A lot of schools push AP, uh, push the kids in the AP, whether they should be in it anymore or not. Like once they come in on the track, they don't want to take them off the track because it looks good for the school to keep their AP numbers. But that's not always good for the kid. And another thing, right again, when you take an AP class, you waiting on a test. To determine whether or not you get this credit. Yeah, it's going to help your GPA out. But you, the whole idea of taking the AP course is so that you can get the credit for college. So that you can have to take that course over in college. Miss Pat. Miss Pat. Miss Pat. not willing to support the kid in the AP. You made Miss Pat famous. Miss Pat, I always look out for her. You got to do this. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's almost like me going back to school. Boy, I had to see Lil Green up here, boy. Man, we had fun, man. We just messed around with it about four times. I was trying to make up here. Twenty five words. Yeah, I mean, you have to go to Google and hit the speaker button so it'll pronounce the word for you. We had to break it down to where But it was his son who said it was day to complete that 25 by Thursday. So it went 6, 6, 6, and 7 on the Thursday. And she had to do that every week. It was a new set of words. Come on, Maisie. Hey, Maisie, pull it in the way back. I'm not supporting her. 
I can see the stress on that. And you end up starting the AP class your junior year, and you get your coming back. No, thirty seconds. I'm sorry. You and your who? You hired me first. Be aggressive when you're confused. Messy. Some of us think that taking our lives to the next level, both personally and professionally, is a confusing and complicated process. Guess what? It's not. I can prove it. Truisms will show you how living your life by rules that are so self-evident and obvious, you'll say, "I knew that." This powerful yet short, detailed bestseller is on sale right now, under ten dollars. Go to Mike McFadden. I'm probably walking around there with one point nine. Anyway, I'm about to add a one point nine. I'm joking. I'm joking. You hear my voice right now? That means you're tuned in. That's the test. I'm going to read. I ain't got to take notes. You know what I'm saying? I'm here every day. There you go. Hey, we're back, man. We're going to uh, wrap up this uh, how GPA impacts recruiting. My final point I had in this thing uh, about your GPA, man, it signals that you're a solid student. Athletic programs today are being penalized for graduation rates. Don't shoot yourself in the foot by just getting by in the classroom. I think, mm -hmm. you know, this is a thing that uh, I know coaches, I know when I, when I was on the staff, we sent out, you know, the progress reports. We did this and that. We punished kids for, you know, if they're not doing what they're supposed to do in class. But ultimately, parents. We need the backup. Right. I mean, I can enforce it, but the thing is, I can only enforce it while you're at the school. When you go home, if there's not a parent there with the same enforcement, the same backup, asking for the same things that I'm asking for from you at school, then it, it's, it's nothing. It's, right. it's all lost. You go home, you don't do anything. Right. And you have to look at it from a perspective of a college coach. If you're not taking class seriously now, what makes you think you're going to take it seriously in college? And they're looking at your GPA saying, is this kid going to wake up and go to class on time without an alarm, without mom and dad getting them up, you know, getting them ready for college? That's what parents have to realize, that your GPA counts on at this college if you're marketable, but if you're going to get up and maintain what they need, is for you to graduate and their graduation rate to be high if you're going to go to school. Because if you got a 2.0, they're thinking, you're not going, you're not doing it here. You're not going to go to uh, class in college. You're going to be lazy. Absolutely. And then parents have to understand, colleges have to go by the thing the NCAA came up with, this thing called the APR. Mm -hmm. So, you know, parents need to understand that if, if a team does not meet the standards of the APR, they, they're going to get penalized. And they're going to lose scholarships. They're going to lose scholarships. So mm -hmm. in, in a coach's mind, Nick Saban is saying, or Mark Rick is saying, or Mark Rick, or, or some of these coaches are saying, your child is not worth my, my school being penalized and we, and we losing scholarships. So we have to recruit the best kids. And the best kids are the kids that can maintain a proper GPA, a good GPA, which, of course, you know, which is I think most kids have an opportunity to qualify best, you know, when you're at a 3.0 GPA. But at... If you struggle a little bit, make sure you have a 2.5. Get get to the 2.5 so you can make the 820, and I think it's an 18 or 17 on the ACT. And then, and then like I said, 9 out of 10, you'll be able to. They changed it again? Yeah, they changed it again. They're making it Jeez. harder and harder. It's getting harder and harder. And and I don't want to say why it's getting harder on the radio. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's no, the no, truth. No. We, we need pretty. the truth. Mm -hmm. so they the trying truth. to keep us out. they trying to get their scholarships back. And I've told the kids that straight up. Please understand what's going on right yeah. now. Some, you know, I'm fortunately unfortunate how you look at it. The, the number of um, African Americans that now are on full scholarships because of athletics keeps growing. And they keep raising the GPA. It's got to be to keep us out. And I, I think the biggest thing, too, when we talk about this, these kids are dime a dozen. Like, why am I going to recruit a borderline kid when it's a kid over here who has it all together? And I think that's the part, like, the day of the Prop 48 is done. done. Well, I'm just worried about, oh, here, athlete, oh, we, we can hide and we can sneak. It doesn't work that way anymore. I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna tell you what, what's, what amazes me, and is that that's why I like, Every time when Winnie comes in, she says she's working on the, the transcripts and everything. I think that is great for Langston Hughes, but it amazes me. I'm telling you something. I know some schools that still, and it's, it's a lot of great women in these, in these high schools. They guess what they can do? They can do the similar to maybe not the same thing. They say, okay, we'll give you a coaching supplement just to help maintain our kids. Just make sure that our kids are qualified. Let them know 
What did you? I have some coaches. They don't, the coaches don't even know their kid's GPA. Like, and, 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 but it's hard for them to do that, and I get it. I get it because it is a lot, and I and it is too much for a coach to do. A coach absolutely. does not have time. A lot of times they're they're teaching classes and they're coaching, and some of them may coach more than one sport. But then they also have a family outside of that too. Absolutely. But, so, let's, let's uh, say, so they still got to maintain that. But but I, I I agree with you on that. But I can't let some of these high school coaches off the hook. Get you a staff. Get you a coordinator. Okay. Don't hate on athletic trust or top notch opportunities. When the parents call us and we're giving them a plan, we're advising them the right way. But you say I'm too busy. Well, get it right because if you was hired by a college, you would have to get it right. You have to have a staff in place. So the same way that if the University of Duke gave you a job and made you the head coach, you would have to get a staff in place. So these high school coaches, I can't let them off the hook. It's not their 100% job to get the kids' grades right. But if you're going to coach, what's the reason that you're coaching? You can get a staff to help you out. Don't take your pride off the table and just get a staff and it'll help you out. It's a system. And, and I, tell, I tell people all the time, I said, you know, it's, it's unfortunate what happened to Coach Carson at MLK. But, you know, when I coached up under him, and I, I've coached up under some really good coaches, but Coach, one thing I can say about Coach Carson, man, he had a system. You know, like I said, he, he, he had a we had Ms. Nelson, she was the academic advisor. She did the same thing kind of like you did. That's why we always had, that's like when coaches came, they was like, all oh, you guys are always qualified because we had an academic advisor. When it came to uh, recruiting, I was I was a recruiting coordinator. You know, it just, and each coach was responsible for this. Each coach was responsible for that. And the thing about it, if, when you have a staff, what Coach Clark is saying, you have to have a system, a system put in place because at the end of the day, don't be upset with, again, with top-notch opportunity athletic trust. When parents come to us, because we're putting the system in place for that child and your athlete to be successful. And at the same time, like like we continue to say every week, parents. Absolutely. Parents. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm responsible for my child. Hello. You de- you're definitely I'm responsible, responsible for, child. for your child, but most of those parents just don't know the opportunity. Yes, they should be responsible. But Take re- football off the table. Let's talk about academics. They should be responsible in right. that category. But they're not, and as coaches, we know that. So if we put a system in place, because we, this been going on since the beginning of the time. Right. So as coaches, you know this problem. So don't be a part of the problem when you can put a system in place and be a part of the solution and help your team. No different than you do the X's and O's to be successful on the team on Friday night to get to the Georgia Dome, the last game of the year, you put a plan in place. All we're doing is saying add another setting to your plan, and you'll be good to go. But my thing is, I mean, you say and put it back, so I'm back on the coaches, but I'm like, well, academics, that's all parenting. Like, I can stress it from the school, but that's parenting. That started from day one, kindergarten, first, whatever they <laughs> into school. So, so well, my baby are they went blaming to school Nick Saban? Months. Are they blaming Nick Saban in Alabama for kids don't graduate? Who's going to be the first to get fired? No, but the what academic I'm saying. academic advisor. Right, but what I'm saying is, that point is out of your parents hand because you don't have the access that you had all you can do is scream from home that's setting that home training that should have been done a long time ago my daughter can't come in the house what below an a right now because i tell her you don't have anything else to do but come home and get these a's i don't make you have clean up all i need you to do is go and do this sport i don't make and you I, have clean up yeah, have. <laughs> you know you do it halfway and i'm okay my thing is, I need you to get these grades because this is what no one can take from you. And I don't understand how parents cannot and will not stress that to their children. And when I'm having those conversations, I get so mad with parents because I'm like, are you serious? How did it get to this point when we're even having this and, conversation? And I agree with you. I'm not letting the parents off the hook by no mind. Ho, ho, ho. We got to go. When we come back, when is a good time to transfer? Get the crush, baby. You know, I get fresh. Oh, man. Let me get some. Oh, man. I ran over. I'm about to go. I need to let my sound work. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. I'm sorry. That's why I'm screaming in the mic. No, no, you good. I told Christian one day, I said, what do you have to do? Go to school. I said, you don't have to pay no bills. You don't buy no shoes. I think I may make up with the dishes in the dishwasher twice a week. Make these great. But, 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 but
was your parents. You they they you they you set your foundation for life. If your, if your child, well, we got a little brain though. They can do this, do this. It's because. Your mom and dad like. Let me ask you this. Like, but the reason like, why like, is it's acceptable like, for them to do that, and the kids don't try because their parents have parents. Like, like, what else you got to do? Like, you ain't got no job. Every kid, but it's not. That's not every kid's situation. And not every kid's situation. What my thing about is, I, I, you would put it in place, right? The reason why I say you want to do that, but like the parents have parents, parents take some responsibility because they always trying to throw a bitch to the coaches. But if you put the plan in place, that doesn't have a whole lot of parent involvement. Yeah, definitely. As a coach, that's what I'm saying. But I'm like, you know the thought because this is what I hate. I think a sister should coach walk in the office. For the head coach, tell them, you ready to throw this kid out the house? How many of those kids do I have? You didn't help. And how many of those kids do I have to keep? Well, I mean, it's like it's a must have to So we don't, we have problems. Don't you want to see? I got bad GPA. That's what I like. But I'm just saying, though, like, that's a lot of high school coaches. I think, honestly, I think, throw those kids up the bus. Every county. Where was you at? I just get mad. Yeah, no, no, because I got this is going to be a three-minute segment. Remember, this is where it gets short. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay, okay. We'll start it, and then like yeah, we'll go. Uh, this, this one, this one, this one. But then you always catch it up. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and then the rundown. Yeah. Yeah. So what you can do, mate, is you when you do your three-minute segment, mm -hmm. you just do. One thing. It might yeah, not that's what be I'm doing. Topic. Yeah, mm -hmm. it might not even have to be on topic. Yeah, it can be a certain. Just Bam. fact or mm -hmm. something yeah. like that you can do for three, you know. Coming back. Just for the next one. There you go, Max. Woo, but hey, man. <laughs> it's something about <laughs> academics and scholarships mm. and children mm -hmm. get people fired up, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, we're back, man. We put, we put the GPA piece to bed. This one right here going to be touching. Going to be real touching because it's <clears throat> a subject that's coming up. Uh, in GHSA, it's actually coming up across the country about uh, when is a good time for a kid to transfer. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion, it's never a good time for a kid to transfer. Mm -hmm. And I say that because, like, we, we've lost this... Competition. We lost a level of competition. It, it, it's the entitlement era. If I can't play here, I'm going to go somewhere else. And I've always felt like, okay, so you're going to leave, so now you have to start over. You have to learn another system. Now you a you know where you at least on the radar. Now you're not on the radar. Then you have to start all over again. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a tough situation here. I'm gonna tell you. I said the same thing. I said I don't think. I said two things. I said sometimes never a, a good reason to transfer. Mm -hmm. But then I said I started thinking about it. So then I wrote notes, and I said sometimes if 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 I have a if I'm a senior and I have a guy that's Playing my my position, and I don't have an opportunity that that I'm gonna have an opportunity for playing time, might be a good reason to transfer. I also said, you know, the lack of exposure and, and the system not being in place might might be a reason for you to transfer. And then I also said, um, the 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 thing about um, your, your relationship with your coach, you know, um, if, if if you don't have one of the the greatest relationship with your coach. And then when, when scouts come around, nine out of ten that coach, that, that, that high school coach, not going to say nothing good about you. Hold that thought, because this this one is going to be so deep. Because it's like, like, I think transfer is like the, a cop out. I really do. You think it's weak? <laughs> it's very weak. When we come back, we're going to get Wendy and we're going to get Coach Paul's opinion on it. And we're going to dive into it because I got like a gang of notes on this right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. The crush, baby. We'll be right back. <clears throat> <laughs> Patrice say coaches need to have more relationships with their athletes, teachers, so they can collaborate on making a successful scholar athlete. Absolutely. I'm around. 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 I'm
department heads. Oh, we before the school year start, we having a meeting. Me will say, me will say, transfer before your junior year. <laughs> Got to January, but she was like, parents need to ask questions. Parents need to ask questions. And I mean, that, that's kind of what we talked about last week. Like, you got all your little stuff. You got no. It's a good time to transfer when you have left no stone unturned. That's on the ballot. I just turned around and said, when is it but now I do, me, I agree with you right here. Transfer is a case by case deal. But we know for the most part why kids are transferring. Right. And those short segments. Right. Some kids are transferring because of grades. Make sure they do that. They don't want to. They don't want to. They don't want to. Your grades follow you, but that's the thing. We get those. Yeah, you. I mean, your your whole folder is coming. <laughs> your whole, your whole okay. phone. Okay. All that comes. You make sure your whole. Just like it all goes to the child. In and out. Be perfect. Be perfect. Be Every situation is right different now. for the most part, yeah. Coach Ballard. Like but for the most part, Coach Ballard, we finna get into it. We know why kids transfer. We know why that rule in place. You know why they circle been some reason they cut off. We know it. How long? They're dangerous and illegal. That's forever. You know, you don't have to worry anymore. <laughs> My friends and I have found a much better way to get high. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we'll be happy to know it's not even illegal. Nice, huh? Want to know what we're doing? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll tell you. We use cough medicine. Seriously. The stuff in the medicine cabinet? Bags, money, or something like that. Oh, well, it's what lucky for me then. Yeah. Okay. Last year, more than 2 million teens risked blackouts, seizures, even comas. Yeah, some good feedback on that. Cough medicine, the kind of in every home. Yeah, Patrice also has that. If, if, if they are not making the grade, hold them accountable for their actions <laughs> instead of still starting on Friday night. Exactly. Because the team needs to win. Coming back. Ones in the medicine cabinet. Need help getting the conversation started? Go to drugfree.org. A message from the Partnership for a Drug Free America. This is Judge Hatchin, and you're listening to the Crush on SSNATL.com. There you go, myself. Hey, we're back. Shout out to my dude, Elvin in the corner doing all kind of work, man. Michael <laughs> fat. You can catch Michael and Joe every morning from 7 to 9 a.m. right here on the Sensation Station Network. Leg out, as Mike say every morning. <laughs> so, we get some good feedback uh, on, on our Facebook and uh, a couple of uh, messages we got on Periscope also. But we're talking about when is a good time to transfer. And, of course, we know one of the primary reasons for kids transferring is to make themselves more marketable to colleges. At the end of the day, that's why kids are transferring today. You know, it, it, it just is what it is. It is what it is. And uh, a lot of statistics that come out, state associations exist to try to create a fair playing field for all athletes who transfer for other than academic reasons. And when, the, when these guys do transfer, We've seen it. Athletes who transfer, for other than academic reasons, they open themselves up, and the schools they transfer to, to penalties <laughs> that can range from ineligibility fines, forfeits, disqualifications, and probations for the school. Now, we remember the story that just happened with Alatoma. People following people, all this, that we, it's, it's plenty of stories like this. Wendy, talk about this. You know, I always think when is it not a good time to transfer? And I definitely say one during your season. That's not a good time to try and pick up and, and make a big move. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think they're going to transfer at this point, and we've established that. Um, so I would say transfer. Thing is, just make sure that you have everything in order when you do transfer. Uh, make sure that your grades are in order. Make sure that your discipline record is in order because all of those things do follow. Those are the things you can't run from. So if you think you're going to a better school and you're just going to pick up and start over there, yeah, maybe athletically you can, but you cannot academically. Everything mm -hmm. goes with you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it, Coach Clifford. Yeah, I always tell parents, also with that transfer, um, again, you got to be careful because I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a situation where I'm seeing some kids transfer and they – they was playing at the old school, now they're not playing. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, and the high school coach that was there, they promised them that, you know, they would play, and then now they're not playing, or they're not getting enough playing time. And then the other thing what happens is that, you know, I had one kid um, leave one county and go to uh, another county, but the, the, they're on a, a different um, grading scale. So guess what? His GPA went down, so now he's ineligible. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the thing about it is that do your research if you're going to transfer, mm-hmm. you know, um, academically and, you know, um, as far as, you know, again, uh, playing time as well because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, they say recruiting don't go on and uh, we didn't recruit this kid, but at the end of the day, people say, okay, well, well it happens. So no the doubt. thing about it is that at the end of the day, when you, if you're going to transfer, if you're going to transfer, do your research first. Mm-hmm. And and then don't transfer off emotion. So my thing about it is, I'm going to go back to what Messio said. I don't think it's ever a good reason to transfer. Mm-hmm. But if you have to transfer, do your research. Do your research. What do you think about it, Coach Clark? Um, I definitely agree with the, with everybody that just spoke. It's a case-by-case situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to speak on if the depth chart is too deep. If you got a youngster coming in and he going to his junior year, but he got a senior and another junior that's already playing, let's just say cornerback, a defensive back position. One of them is a senior, one of them is a junior, and they've been starting since they was a freshman. Mm-hmm. So a case-by-case situation, a lot of kids going to transfer because they feel like I'm not going to play, I'm going to stick around here because your recruiting year is your junior year, and I'm going to go transfer somewhere in January and try to get a look if you do your research to go to a good team because what parents don't understand is just because you think somebody lost a lot of seniors, that don't mean they bad the next year. Right. Because somebody's already in that spot, so you still have to go compete, but you're at least saying I might get a shot versus I'm here at this school and they got two people in front of me, I'm not going to play. And they scared of the competition because you just still one play away. You're going to play, they just run from it. Oh, so I'm kind of, I got something to say about that. I'm going to say it, then we're going to talk about it on the other side because one of the things, football is a long, in it, your sports, it's a long season. So much stuff can happen. Look at yesterday, Teddy Bridgewater. Mm-hmm. Now, Sean Hill, he has to play. The season is so long. Why are you running from competition? That, that's just how I feel about it. It's a ready-made world, and they're looking for a scholarship right now. Microwave Society. When we come back, we're going to dive into this some more, man. It's the crush, baby. That, that's my only thing. Phone lines are now open. You know. Call us at 678 The season, so, the season, so, so much stuff happens. They, they just scared. They so, scared. So much stuff happens, like... Why not just continue to compete? It's scared. You gon' you gon' find your way to the field. They scared. They don't think about special teams. And if you if you got a good team, and y'all up by forty. Guess who's getting in the game? But they feel like we don't get no play versus by start. Well, they come that two percent. Lot of that daddy ball. Daddy ball. Think about who you know. Your son came to you and he said, "Hey, dad, I'm going to eleventh grade. The two stars that corner, a senior." And he's saying over here, Are across the track, you will let him go? Nope. More a short day. If that, what if that coach seen you? We know what all happened. He said, no, man, we need it. Because ain't no for sure. Why, why am I taking him out of a system that he already know to take him somewhere he might not even fit in? So what if that coach come to you saying, we need him now. We got a spot. And, and, and that's just the thing. Me taking him, so I'm basically telling him, I'm setting him up for, nah, you can always run from your problem. Guess what? Now here he's talking Sticking about fight. doing drugs like pot and Stick out Gotta be patient. Because you don't know what's going to happen. Now, the, again, the season's so long. You don't have to worry anymore. My friends and I have found the all season long. Somebody could get hurt. Somebody, they could transfer. Well, you sick old all you bought. Yeah. Wanna know what we're doing? Yeah, I just got <laughs> some apple on my over my cold. I tell you, yeah. the stuff in the medicine cabinet. I take the apple on every day. It's not a cold. I don't have a cold. I'm sick. Oh, it's looking for me then. Last year, more than two million teens risked blackouts, from work, seizures. Oh, yeah, I think it's It was freezing in the lab with me. When you talk to your kids when about they get drugs, wet, the, uh, sure mo, 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 mo. Yeah, need help getting the conversation started? 
Thank you, Thank you make us all up, Mike. Huh? Thank you make it happen. Kevin, Kevin Smith said, you're not running for competition, Coach. What? You can't get a scholarship on the bench. Where's the place that you're about how many times? See, that's what people think. Transfer like a stud's on the But Coach, Coach Smith, is he is he truly a stud? Is he a stud in his daddy eyes? Don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving and feed the big That's what I want to know. Is he a stud in daddy eyes? Or he a stud? Because if you be, be a stud, it don't matter where he at. He get off. Coming back. If he got the if he got the whole thing, make sure you tune in. There you go, my uh, what the guy you might. Hey man, we're back, man. This, I tell you, this transfer thing always it, it's always a touch of thing. And like Wendy said, for for every sport, it's, it's different. Yeah. Ba baseball is a little different. Basketball is definitely different. And football, I mean, it, 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 it's a case by case situation. I just, you know, my thing in today's time, winning has influenced transfers, and that's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Yeah. And, and and that has to do with the microwave society. Everybody wants to go to the program that they think right now is hot because they feel like the scouts gonna come watch them play. Very true. You know, and, and, and like we all agree, it's a case-by-case -case situation. And it could be depth chart. Um, and like you said, some of it could be just daddy ball eye because they think, oh, my son is the best thing since sliced bread and the coaches won't give him a shot, which is clearly wrong. Like you said, you got to stay in the fight. You got to compete. Be ready because that was a great example you, you used with Teddy Bridgewater. I mean... And it wasn't even football related, I don't think. They, he was he was in drill. They were yeah. individual. And now you got another quarterback that's got to step it up, you know. So um, it, it, it's definitely a touchy subject, but it happens. It's, it, and with the internet going, everybody transferring now. Mm -hmm. They 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 stacking the deck because that's what the kids are saying now. I tell you what, we all just go play together, and everybody get a look. They sacrificing. It used to be selfish. Now it's kind of going to, hey, you come play with me. Hey, you come play with me. And we all get a look. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how it's kind of going. Yeah, that's a, it's so whack to me. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> so, go ahead. It's so whack. But it, it might be whack, but the thing about it is, is that you really can't hate on it, though. Because the thing about it is, is that if, if, if I transfer and it puts me in a better opportunity, and I have a better opportunity to say, okay, well, so like I'm getting recruited by some one double A's, right? But um, and and I I know I know for a fact that I might can play on a Division One A level. And if I go to a say like I transfer to a school and I have to get this get a little bit more exposure, or say like say like a Kent State may come by, a mid major, right? a mid major may come by and say, hey, if he can play at this school, he can play for me. And that's what and, and that's what some coaches say because what one of the one of the questions they ask you they always one another question they ask they say um, what's the level of competition they're playing against so a lot of times it can hurt your recruiting process too if it, depending on the level of competition you're playing against so again we can say it's a cop out but the thing about it, it it's got it's the it's a case by case situation and my thing about it is is that even 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 some situations where like, I, I tell people, I say, you know, people, some people ask me, say, what do you think about qu quarterback transfer? I said, well, I don't think quarterbacks should have to transfer. Because my thing about it is that, you know, um, most of the time when you're a quarterback, you're going to have to throw for the quarterback coach anyway. So, mm. or, 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 or for a coach. So, a lot of times, I don't think quarterbacks is not a, ne ne not, not a necessity for you to have to transfer. Because most times, you're gonna, you, they're going to want to see you throw live or anything. But the certain positions... You know, it, it might help you, like a cornerback or a receiver. But you say a quarterback. Let me ask you this, and I ain't mean to cut you off. Look at Harrison Bailey. As a freshman, he's starring varsity. It's some parents saying right now, man, ain't no way we going to Marietta with my son playing quarterback. This kid finna start for the next four years, and they blocking out a competition saying, hey, I could just go over here and get my own shot. So at the end of the day, they still looking for the bottom line figure. Can I get a scholarship? Because this kid is a freshman. He's starting. And I'm going to sit my son over here. Let's say you just take him over there. And he sit over there at ninth grade, 10th grade. you like, man, he still ain't played. So you're going to get itchy and say, I got to take my son over here so at least he can throw the ball, regardless of you still got to do a workout for the quarterback coach at whatever college. 
you can't even get the workout if you don't even have no film to show. What I was saying was, what I was saying was, if a kid is already playing, if it was, I, I guess I, I, I didn't elaborate on that. If a kid is already starting at one school, I'm talking about a quarterback. If, if a quarterback is already starting at one school, for him to leave that school, now he's not transferring. Yeah, but now you see it. Yeah, it happens, and it, it happens often. They think it's the system. They don't know that rule that you gonna have to work out for that quarterback coach anyway. I think quarterback a little bit different. I, I, I think quarterback a little bit different because if a quarterback is playing, and he, you, pretty much you at the school because you like the offense and all this good stuff. So if you're playing, what reason is that for you to leave? What what other system are you gonna go to? Like let, let let's let's take let's take Ryan Glover for example. Mm -hmm. You know, let's just say for the sake of argument, he wants to go to ah, let me go to Mays. He's been a three year starter, two years, two, three year starter at Woodward Academy. What reason would that be for him to go to Mays? Why would he transfer? So say like so so say like I met a I met a mayor, okay? Mm -hmm. who, who runs the wishbone or wing T type style office or St. Pius, mm -hmm. right? And, and and I'm a six two, six three quarterback and and I want to play quarterback and I and I know if if I'm not getting the looks that, that I can get. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be at Maris. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't be at Maris. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because as a parent I did decision. I did my research. If I throw the ball, why am I running the Ville? Because some people tell you something different sometimes till you get there. Tell you what? You into your research. Tell tell you what? There we gonna we gonna change it up for y'all no, for you. Coach I'm telling you they do it. They do Bruh, it. how long how long Chad we been at Maris? I'm just telling you it happens. <laughs> how long Chad we been at Maris? He been there forever. Running that same. Well, he oh, been okay. running the Veer for twenty years. Okay then Why he gonna change for your son? So let me let's let's, let's put Grayson out there then. Jeff Heron been running the, the wing T forever. And guess what he's still running? The wing T. But he's still throwing that spread out there for the sake. But he's still going to go back to it. About week three, it's going to be like a sewing machine over there. He line, he's lined up in the spread. What were they running last week? The wing T. They were motioning. Inside handoff. Outside handoff. They running the wing T. So guess what? I uh, guess what uh, happened there. A lot of those because they sideline was full of capacity with the, they dressed out every player. So now you taking your whole wide receiver crew. They might start scratching their head saying I'm out, or running back saying I'm out because this don't fit me. You know what I'm saying? It, so it can. You don't know what's really going on in the locker room, but the kids tell the truth. Well, he said he was going to stick stick with it, mm -mm. but you line up every Friday night. Mm -mm. But he did say that. He said he said we. He said, "I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna implement the spread as well as the, uh, the wing tee." And it, you know, when we come back, man, we're gonna finish this up, baby. It's the question. We're coming right, right back. back. Coming right back. Coming right, right back. back. Oh, Ask your question real quick. When when Kenyon went to Alabama as a running back, yep. All those kids that was in front of uh, Kenyon, do you think there was a point where he said, "Man, why don't transfer?" Kenyon stayed there. Because his school. dad is crazy too. Yeah, his dad wasn't let him leave. Right. That, I mean, back. that was a smart decision, right? Very smart. Cause look where he at. Right. He playing Stick in it out. now. There you go, Mason. Hey, man, we're back, man. Very good conversation we're having right here, man. Talking about when is a good time to transfer, and I just want to kind of piggyback on what we were kind of talking about. It's, it's almost like let, let's say you play for a Core Jarvis team. You've done your research. You know that Core Jarvis runs spread. You know, as a quarterback in Corey Johnson, you're going to throw the ball 30, 35 times a game. That's why I'm sending my son. If 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 I'm a quarterback, if, if I have a son that's a, this quarterback who wants to throw the ball, I'm not. we're not going to be stuck at Maris because I know Coach Chadwick has been running the bill <laughs> since, he, since he, he started coaching. So, but that's a lot of research. Right. And if you think that – when a coach talks to you and promises that he's going to change everything around one person, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Because think how long he's happen. been coaching versus no kid is I'm, no kid is that special. I'm just sorry. If you I, I coach long enough. Doing, oh, that's it. Because why am I run the system for two, three years, and then I got to go back and, and, and reteach myself? No, we're going to run my system. This is what I know. This is what I know. So what happens? So, so, Macy, so like your son has been at a school, right? Mm-hmm. 
the man up for three years. Mm -hmm. All right, the coach comes and says, okay, well, the defensive coordinator leaves. I'm saying your son plays defense. Mm -hmm. I know we're talking about quarterbacks, say your son plays defense. Mm -hmm. New defense will come in, and he said like he's been, you guys been running a, let's say, a 4-3. A 4-3. A mm -hmm. Right, he comes in and says, okay, and he's been playing safety. Mm -hmm. You know, they, in 4-3, you're going to play with two high safeties. Mm -hmm. And say like he comes in and says, okay, we're going to run a 3-5-3, three, three, right? A 3-3-5, three, mm -hmm. three, right? Mm -hmm. And then and then he said, okay, well, I'm going to make your son play in the box. What that and then my thing might is what if he's not a box player? But now, he, so now, so now, do, do you stay and take a chance on hurting your son's recruiting, or do you leave? But that's a whole nother search there right there because a whole nother system is coming in. But then the thing about it is again, it goes back. It goes back to what I originally said. You know, it's a case by case situation. No so doubt, the, no doubt. But, but for for that situation right now, the first thing I'm gonna do once we look at the system. I'm going to figure out, if, if my son is a safety, how does he figure in playing in the box? That, that's the question I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask all the questions to figure out how can we get my son to safety. Now, if you're telling me and you're telling him that for the team, I need you to play in the box. and do the, Now, I, I'm like, okay, you know what? We're going to do this for the team. But if I see that, nah, my son not a box player, now I have to research where can I send my son to give him the best shot? Because now he's going to be out of position. So I got a question. So you you would take the risk. And I'm not saying and I, I'm, I've been, I'm, I'm an athlete, former athlete. And so you would take a risk on your son saying, okay, I'm going to do the best thing for the team. But at the, as a parent, you got to do the best thing for your child. Right. So that's what I'm saying. So like that's why when I said, okay, well, you know, about the transfer thing, I think as a parent, once you do the research, you got to do the best thing for your child. That's why I think, you know, that's why I think transfers, and like Wendy said, transfers going to always happen because what parents, as a parent, what you want to do? The best thing for your child. But are people doing it the best thing for a child? Like I said, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to sit down and talk to the coach. And we're going to figure out if this is what we need to be doing. Because again, if, if, if he's been playing, He's pretty much already been recruited. We we have a good idea of what are his schools. So now, just as a coach, thinking me as a coach, this does nothing but add to his credibility. Because now he's he's being a team player. He's doing something for the team. But when I'm talking to that coach and I'm talking to college coaches, look, you know my son's safe. We're doing this because this might be the best thing for the team. You know what a coach gonna say? Well, you know what, Coach, you know, I, I like him, but I don't never see him playing space. Boy. They going to get that. It's now, he's already it's, seen him play in space. No, but what I'm saying is that. Is he well, a junior or a senior? No, I'm saying if he's a junior, I see he's been playing since he's, he's been at the school too. It, but my team, mm -hmm. they, So he got film, right? So he got film. There you but, go. But I'm going to tell you, these college coaches will come up with an excuse not to offer a child. And then because it's not like a kid, like, it's not like, it's like a kid might be playing offensive. It's not like a kid might be playing guard. Or or or, or not, a guard or a tackle, but he, he said, "Well, coach, you know, I, well, you recruit, you send him as a, a center, but I ain't never seen him snap the ball." I said, "You know, it's just it's this situation yeah. like that. You know, I'm just I'm yeah. just I'm just, I'm just talking. I, I guess I'm just speaking from a recruiting standpoint." And but like Mia said, it's a case by case situation. But as the parent, I'm gonna do all the necessary research before I make. I'm I'm not gonna just microwave and be like, "Ah, oh, we out of here." Yeah, I agree. Case right. by case situation. So it's the parents final decision at the end of the day. No doubt. When we come back, when should you commit to a college? Wendy, you're going to love this one right here. Okay. It's a crush, baby. We'll be right back. Good saving <laughs> right there, baby. Well, that, that's what I'm talking about right now, Coach Ryan. If he playing, the scholarship is there already. The offer is there already. If he done play, if he done started in two years, we go shit. But if he if he if he a rising senior, he already bought out. We don't matter. I'm not trying to try no senior year. Yeah, we ride that thing out. But I think he was. I think he was speaking of if he going into his junior year. He transferred. You know, he did just transfer, yeah. Yeah, but. Because all I keep saying on my team is was late last year. I was like, Last year was late. Actually, he had some pretty good coaches, though. They brought in that trainer. But he left all along with Lamar County. Yeah, all along with Lamar County. Because Lou used to work me, and that was a good trainer. 
really killed him. Was a kid in Alabama. When someone is pressuring you, he had no other thing to do. How many ways can you say that? They had to call because of lightning. We want to see it tonight. Whoa, there it is. Right now. They called it because of lightning. That was it. And then we saw our boy Kobe Durant. Third quarter when they called the game. Yeah, late third. Late third. I do want to start getting close to 11 third. I'm like, oh, they, they it does. There's no athletic scholarships, right? Yeah, there was one of the right. biggest disappointments in my yeah. life next year. I'm in Indianapolis. We get to the playoffs. We get knocked D3. The next couple of Google it, baby. Everyone all academics, baby. All yeah, academics. They can't give you no money. Oh, maybe they talking about the Malik and um, Malik thing. Everything else came below that, including my own desires. HBCUs don't use a year for uh, uh, athletic physical parts. Uh, HBCUs, uh, every decision I made, don't have the money. Yeah, Kel, but Malik, Malik was already on the map. But Malik ain't gonna play quarterback in college, though. He ain't gonna play quarterback in college. The DB. This is Teddy Parrish, and you're listening to the. Hey, we're back, man. Hey, this recruiting, <laughs> this recruiting talk, man. It, it, it gets everybody going, man. It get the blood boiling, all that good stuff, man. Right now, we're finna go to when should you commit to a college? Now, this part of the game is is, is very tricky because it seems that uh, now. Kids are getting offers even before they uh, get their schedule uh, in high school. <laughs> I mean, they just are. Wendy, we're going to let you start with this one. So when should you commit to a college? And I say as soon as you know you have met the requirements for that particular school and what they're asking for from you. If you know that that place, you, um, you know that that place is a good place for you, you've been even on an unofficial and you like what you are seeing? your parents like what they see, you think you can be academically sound there as well as athletically sound, I say you go ahead and commit. You have to be satisfied with that choice. And um, I don't recommend decommitting, but you can if you have to. I don't recommend it. But that, that is something that's out there that you can do if you need to. Mm. Uh, Coach Clifford, let's talk about it. All right. One of the things I, I kind of tell my guys, and, uh, you know, especially I say, you know, enjoy the process, you know, and, and then I say, you know, if, if a school becomes the right fit for you and your family, and what I mean by right fit, like Wendy said, academically, socially, and, and it's, it's a 40-year decision, okay, a 40- to 50-year decision. So, and, and then one of the things I said was is that if, if you have 10 or more offers, going into after the spring of your junior year, I think you should commit. Because I, it kind of bothers me uh, when, when, when guys have offers, you know, after their junior, um, I'm sorry, after their junior, or even their senior year in spring, and then they, uh, I'm sorry, they're, if you have 10 more offers going into your senior year after spring, mm -hmm. um, and, and and you decide, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to go to, I'm going to camp at certain schools. Mm -hmm. I think if you have 10 more offers, I, I really think you can, Find a certain school that might fit you fit you best because what happens is that once you go into camp season, I'll, it, kids got to understand most kids commit the most in May and in July. All right, those are the highest times in August. Those are those are one of the highest peakest times where a lot of kids commit. So guess what? A lot of times, if you decide to wait, you decide to camp. A lot of times, you might miss your spot because once once a school. It's like I'm only taking two safeties. And I, once I get those two safeties, it's a wrap. And so my thing about it is, so if, if I'm a senior, I have 10 more offers, I'm starting to visit those schools during the spring. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to, you know, build a relationship. And then I'm going to commit because, you know, and then the thing about it is I'm going to commit. I'm going to play my senior season out. And then, you know, if I'm an early enrollee, I'm going to sign. But my thing about it is that, again, nothing is final until you sign on, 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 on February. No doubt. Talk about it, Coach Clark. Um, most definitely, um, I always tell my guys, my juniors that has you know more than ten offers, like Coach Gator said, at the end of spring practice on that tenth day, you need to go ahead and set up your visits because the month of June is a hot month. Mm -hmm. While everybody else going to camp, mm -hmm. you need to take your visits to these colleges 
with your mom, dad, your family. Like you said, it's a it's a forty year process, but you want to go ahead and knock it out the month of June, and go ahead and get it on out the way because July you're starting your preparation for high school. They're starting their preparation, and kids are starting to wind it down. Um, so, in high school, Georgia usually um, spring practice is over like May fifteenth or something like that. Mm. We setting up visits ASAP. We're mm. trying to get to the colleges, get to visit them, see what you like. Almost like an official. You getting a hey, you got ten visits. Go ahead and knock out five. Let's see your top five. Let's see who you like. And go ahead and commit. Because at the end of the day, when June end of June, July get, and you go to calling them back and coach is not answering the phone because that number is full. So you go visit the campus, see what it's all about, and um let's let's make it happen. So I say the month of June. I just say don't commit. And this is my recommendation for any sport. Don't commit until you have visited the school. Mm. Unofficial or official. I don't care. Just don't commit to anything until you have stepped foot on that campus and you've seen what it's like. And, and piggyback on that, with your parents. Yeah. I see a lot of kids committing and they just went on a bus trip well, and committed. Well, well, it, it is pressure. But, well, but, but regardless, and I blame the college coaches too, though, because no. I think that you don't let a kid commit. If you're a high school coach and I'm taking the kids on a visit, I'm not letting that kid commit unless his parents know. That's the, that's the crazy surprise. I had a parent call me one time, how my kid could commit? And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't know he committed. And he went to the school on a visit with another coach, and the kid committed. Well, my first point on this, this is from my book when I when I write my book on recruiting right here. <laughs> College coaches won't stop recruiting. Allow yourself to continue to get recruited. College coaches at every level are always looking to improve their roster. Your verbal is good, but coaches are going to accept other verbals as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stay on top of this with each school, verbals and sign, because there are limited number of scholarships per team each year. Allow yourself to be recruited till you 100% sure. Yep. Of where you want to go. With your parent, though. With your parent, because you, 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 because I'm telling you that college is a different, different ball game, and they, like you said, they putting the pressure on you because they, they the if you're you. a top recruit, what do they want? They just want the article to say, hey, he just committed to the university of such and such. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, and, but I mean, I think when I think about what Tanja Warrior when she was here, when she was talking about Nigel Warrior's process. When, when, when you're a kid and you have multiple offers, when, you, when you're a kid like that, you can play it all the way out when you have everything in order. If you're a bubble kid, you got to do I'm it a, now. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like that, though. I'm, I'm going to tell you why I don't like when kids drag it out. Because the thing about it is that it lessens opportunities for other kids. My thing about it, if you know, you, if you know, if you know where you want to go, and you just want to, oh, I want to do the hat trick, and I want to do all this, all this, all this baloney crap, man. No, don't do that because at the end of the day, give the coaches. Because I've seen, I've seen kids play coaches where they, when they know, and they, they sign, I know, I've known kids that were silently committed to another school. And I'm gonna tell you something. And I've literally stopped talking to the parents and stopped talking to the kid because I said, listen, I don't play those games. Tell, I said, listen, I said, you know what? I'm not gonna say nothing because that's not my place. Mm -hmm. One thing about it is, you man up, stop playing games, and if you're committed, make it publicly known, and then and then and then so it can give another somebody else another opportunity because you'll see some schools have scholarships left over because they why some kid played the little hat trick, some kid played games. <laughs> man, cut that out, man. For real, cut that out. Hey, when we come back, man, we're gonna continue with this subject. When should you commit to a college? It's the crush, baby. Hey. One thing I know gets gated that, 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 that is true right now. Leaders now Mia saying, because Mia done been through the process and twice. Just anywhere. But with commits, each party can back out. Because it don't matter, like you said, it don't matter to you to sign your name on that list. Right. And Kevin, you right. And it's bad, bad, and it's a recession. Oh, no doubt. No doubt, because that, because that, you got to get back to it, too. Because the paper get jammed. Now, I done seen the printer get jammed. And you got to send that thing in the mail. I done seen the printer get jammed. Or and we like, I know we done facts that I'm like, oh, we ain't got it on the scene. We ain't got it on the scene. 
got it. The and then you had to go get on the bat phone. Like, man, just say you don't want this damn kid, man. Right. Coke will want the kid. Right. <laughs> I ain't ran it that so, so that's why I always say, if you can play the game, play the game. So I wasn't mad at Nigel Moore. Everybody kind of knew where he was going. But now he, now he a big time kid. I want to take all my trips. Like, you know, somebody might change. Like Nick Saban ain't been in my house yet. Nick Saban might change. So my thing, my, my, my thing about it is that why? Like my thing about it, all you doing, all you doing, my thing about all you doing is psychologically, all you doing psychologically, because it can hurt you too, though. Man, it can hurt you. It, 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 it can confuse you. But you only got one. You only got one time to be a recruit. But then you say you ain't like the video. I hate the video. But that's being a recruit. That, what I'm saying is, I hate that part. Now that part I hate that. But what I'm like, Nigel Warren didn't do no video. But he took his time with brother Tyler Simmons. He didn't do no video. But when he when when he was committed to Alabama, Alabama told him he can't take no more trips. How you gonna tell him I can't take no more trips? I think I think that's our award. Nah, but that, and that's what I'm saying. So you can't play, you can't have it both ways. Right. Now I ain't no fan. Of, I ain't no fan of the hat. I hate the hat. Especially when you coming through the door and then you ain't gonna be worth that damn food. On your way to your GED diploma and a better life. But I know you're probably just a little bit. Kale, you got one shot. Play it out, but I don't like the hat trick. I, I, I'm good. So how long should you go with? Because the hat trick gonna go down to the last visit. The hat, the hat trick. Like the boy from uh, Grace that committed to the game. You said take your five visits. He ain't taking visits right now. And that's crazy. Me, I'm taking all my visits. He can still take them. He can still take them. He can still take them. What I'm saying, I'm not like me. So should he start doing recruiting since he committed? He should still go through the process. Yeah, 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 sure. I got kids. Said, they said, they said, you better go take your ball. You better go take all your shoes. So then, what if you hold out until the five business is over? Then do it. You still got a weak gap. If you're that guy, they're going to hold it. Now the Warriors, Ohio State, Florida, they're going to hold your spot. If you that guy, they're going to hold the spot. Because they got. Hey, man, we're back, man. Shout out to uh, Coach Ryan Andrews, man, uh, out there at Shiloh High School, man. Coach Andrews <clears throat> said, biggest problem with kids decommitting is coaches not protecting kids when they commit and parents and third parties searching for better offers. What do you think about that, Coach Clark? The searching for better offers is is sometimes goes too far because you can have a mid-major kid mm -hmm. and he gets a, you know, a Central Florida and then he go to thinking, well, I heard Alabama got a kid that decommitted. Can you go check that out? Stay in your lane. Right. You was afforded. You was blessed with an opportunity. And you could tell by the number of offers you have. I had a parent call me. He's, his, he wanted his son Power 5. Now, he had 15 mid-majors. And my first question was, that, that's, who you, you that's who you that's are. Who right you are that's who you are. That's who you are because everybody's offering you. And his first thing was, well, this kid is also on the team. I think he, no, no, he didn't take power five offers from your son he was just better than your son at power, them power five schools looked at both films and that's what you got but I said if you want power five you had one power five but he didn't want to go all the way to Wisconsin you want the power five right around the block well he didn't want to go to power five school please. and I said you, it'll be not too long you, you'll you take it you are who, who you are who recruit you bottom line talk about it for a second okay. I want you to read that one more time what he said just he said Biggest problem with kids decommitting is coaches not protecting kids when they commit and parents and third parties searching for better offers. Okay. There's two ways to address that, and I'm going to address that. I'm going to tell you why. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, once a kid commit, you know, he's committed. But my thing about it is that if a kid is playing well or he's playing great, there's nothing wrong with him having other options. Because at the end of the day, if, if I end up at a better university that puts me in a better situation for my football career, there's nothing wrong with that. Because again, both we, we said it, both parties can pull out. He could be committed to one school, so you telling me, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going at the coach right now. So you're telling me that, you, do you think a school stop recruiting kids when, they, when the kid commit? No, because guess what they think? At any point of time, this kid could decommit. Right. And so guess what? So guess what they could do? They could pull back just. Oh, we might find a better kid. 
Yep. So I always tell you, I said, until your name, until that the name is on that dotted line, and that fax goes through, yeah. your process still continues. Now, you can say, okay, now, I, that, 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 that's just my opinion. Now, I tell people, I say, you know, once you commit, commit. And the thing about it is, but the, it, it's still a fact that I've seen schools, I I promise about two years ago, two a week before a week before signing day, a week before signing day, I had a school pull a kid offer. Pull a kid's offer. And the thing about it is it's like, okay, well, so and the kid the kid had been committed all year long. All year long. So what I'm saying is that uh, just like a school could pull a kid offer, a kid could decommit. So my thing about it is that when a coach says, okay, well, all right, well, you know, once you commit it, your whole process stop. No, yeah. because at, cause at, the end of, at, at the end of the day, if you do that and a, and a, and a school pulls that kid offer, and a, and a school pulls that kid offer, and that kid ends up at a place, a kid ends up at a place where he, he, he doesn't want to be at, he's going to look at you and blame you, coach. So my thing about it is the process still continues. My thing about it is you tell a coach, say, listen, he's committed. He's committed, so if you still want to recruit him, you can root him, but he's committed. Oh, they so, gonna they gonna continue to so, recruit. So, so so my thing about it is you don't, gotta tell them that. don't don't say don't 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 say searching for for better offers because my thing about it is that guess just like a just like a high school coach, some high school coach you want to coach in college. Guess what they're doing? You so might they they're searching for a better job because everybody wanna make more money. So don't 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 and then the thing about it is that some some coaches have uh, help say, Hey, hey, do you um can you help me get a better job? You know, at, at one point in time, he that coach might have been an assistant coach, might have been a coordinator. <laughs> nice. and he, he had somebody to help him become a head coach. So at the end of the day, man, be careful what you say when you're dealing with these kids. Because at the end of the day, it's not your life, it's theirs. Okay. My second point from my book, when I get ready to uh, write my book, you cannot stop playing at the level that got you there. You are being recruited for a reason. Your skills shouldn't diminish because you verbally committed. You hadn't signed anything yet. You're on the right path. Continue to perfect your craft. Your athleticism has gotten you to this spot. It's too many times, and I saw this uh, at the Langston uh, Westlake game on uh, last Friday. A couple of high-profile kids played terrible, mm -hmm. terrible in the first quarter, in the first half. And I made a point to walk by one of those uh, big-name kids and like, dude, you stink. When you say playing terrible, what was he? With? Dude, he he played like he he played like he had arrived. But when I put that bug in his ear, <coughs> and I'm pretty sure he got cussed out when he went in the locker room. Oh, he was a, a different totally different player in the second half of this game. Right. So you know, I wasn't down there on the sidelines. I couldn't be down on the sidelines. But usually, I'm down there giving them the business, just so you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tell they you need that bug. They need that bug in their ear. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. I was at the South of the Cab to see the road game. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I I I love coaches at Cedar Grove, you know, and I love the coaches at South Cab. But Cedar Grove is loaded with a lot of Division One players. But when I tell you, so it didn't look like it on um, on Friday. It seemed like it seemed like South the Cab was the the team that had nine or ten or twelve Division One yeah. players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. and, and 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 the thing with with this point right here, it, recruiting continues. Like say, don't don't just rest on your laurels because you because you because you getting these letters and you and got think, this offer. Yeah, I think part of it's keeping those kids grounded because that's what happens. They get all these letters. The mail, I see it because it comes into my room. Yeah. And so and uh, I see all the mail and I think it, they get beyond themselves. Hmm. Keep them grounded. Keep yeah. them grounded. I got one more point to this before we move on. But when we come back, we're gonna hit that last point. Hey, Amen. When should you commit to a college? Just to crush, baby. We'll be right back. I thought we did. If you have to call, let me see. Let me know. Can Andrew and say? I'll turn your mic off. Okay. Can Andrew <laughs> say uh, again? Better school doesn't mean bigger school doesn't mean better fit. Personally, just like as a coach, it's some places that you should that you are better taking an assistant job versus being a head coach. But the thing about it is, that's not that's, that's not your choice. That's not that's not that's not that's, as, as, as a coach. That's not that's not your decision to make. That's on that child and that parent. That's not your choice. You can say, "Oh, you." That's not your choice. As a coach, you, as, that's the problem. That's my problem with high school coaches. Because the thing about it is, you think you, you you think it's your choice where the kids go. No. Because guess what? You may say, "Well, I think you need to go to." 
Alabama, and he may not be. They may not be the best thing for him. So this has to be one of those things where you know that. You know, some kids are SEC. Man, know some, some kids, kids, man, I'm going to tell you something what I learned, too. Because I'm going to tell you, because I've been a high school coach. When you, when, 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 when sometimes these coaches feed, because I'm going to tell you something, these coaches feed off, uh, these coaches have egos, and they feed off their egos to some of these kids that like, man, yeah, they, some of these coaches want to walk in and be in the front line and walk around and, and shake the coach's hand, and everybody be like, man, who? Who was that player? Get out of here with that, that man. Like, I don't, exist. like it's, that's that ego care. stuff, man. I'm be telling you. To be a like, parent. Because kids in that's care one of my problems there. I'm you. telling you that, man. When that I hear stuff like that, that lets me know you have no idea what you're talking about. And I tell you that, and I tell you that to your face. I'm telling you, man, because you don't know. Because the thing about it is, in life, when you have a better opportunity, you take it. Yeah, but then... Sure. In life, man. So I don't, I don't, I've don't, seen both sides. Like, like it's certain. It's certain. So kids, like, <laughs> like we never walked around. Insane. Like nobody walked around and took credit for the James A. Greg Smith. You don't take credit for those kind of people. You take credit for Kenny Johnson, who been had like nobody, and he ends up at a platoon cook. You, you, you take credit for a John Wages Mill set because he ends up at Tennessee State and he had no offers. Absolutely. Or like, you know what I mean? Certain kids, DeAndre recruited himself. Like, he big, he went on down. You can't even knock it. Hey, man, we're back, man. My last point to this, uh, when should you commit to a college man? And, of course, we, we, we touched on it. It's not official till you sign on the dotted line. Verbal commitment is, is, is dating. Sign a day is marriage. That's, that's, that, that's the analogy I use. Uh, don't rush a decision. You're on the right path if you're being recruited, like we said earlier. Keep the habits that got you recruited. Know the recruiting history of schools you are considering. Recruiting is a business. I'll say this again, recruiting is a business. Enjoy the process, it only happens once. I mean... And coaches are trying to keep their jobs right. at the end of the day. Right. The recruiting coaches are trying to keep their jobs. The head coaches are trying to keep their jobs. It's a business. Right. Don't back. lose sight of that. Go back to what I said, that's why your project don't stop because say if a coach gets out, you commit to a school and the coach gets fired. Right. And you and then and then but then you don't stop your process. You better not stop the process. I said <coughs> in the beginning, keep going because because they still recruiting. So you better still be, you better still be processing. Gotta have, you gotta leave your options open because like you said, if a new I've seen coaches come in with a new staff, and um, wow, there was a kid at Peachtree Ridge, and he was committed to Arkansas State, and I felt like colleges need to get um some type of um suspension or something on scholarships or something because the kid was committed, signed, sealed, and delivered. Well, the coach took off and went to Fresno State or somewhere. New staff came in and won a whole nother crew. They dropped 12 kids, and it was three weeks to signing day. So I had to shuffle again. He still went D1 at the end of the day, but you just put a damper on the kid because he went to the school, he went through the process, and, and, and visited the school, and you ain't even get a kid a second chance. You ain't even interview the kid. At least interview him. Well, I mean, the same thing happened to uh, Rodriguez Davis. It made it. You know, he was committed to Georgia. New staff comes in. They don't want him. He, he, he because you understand. But where's the penalty? It's not no penalty because you hadn't signed anything yet. This, this is this is why you continue with the process. You you can't be until until like we always say until you send that fax. And they fax it back, right. and then your name go across that screen that they got it in. Right. Like you, who you, who you mad at? But that's what I'm saying. So, that's why so, I get so, it. Saying you got to keep your options open. So that's and so it goes back to what I said when you with, with you said was it Coach Andrews? So that's the that was the point I was making to what he was saying. I said I'm like I'm like Coach, you can't say that because at the end of the day your process has to continue. Because what if a coach get fired? What if the coach that recruiting you goes somewhere else, and the coach that comes in don't like you? This is part of the process. This is happens all the time. You see kids get, oh, yeah. kids get dropped all the time. And the thing about it is, so don't, that's why I say, you know, you have to be careful as a, as a high school coach when you're advising a child, you know, on a process and you say something like that. Because guess what? Those coaches, man, those kids, don't, they, they, they don't listen to their high school coach. Most times, 
most situations they love their high school coach. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful when you say that. Because the thing, ultimately, what, again, kid, the parent, because again, we have to be comfortable. Like, you take these kids on these trips. This kid has to be comfortable with waking up every day here for the next four years. I mean, like, you committing before, without even going to see the campus, like, it's, 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 it's asinine. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I agree. That, 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 that makes yeah. no sense. And this is why we talked about last week. Use the unofficials. Before, because the cream of the crop going to get the official. You might, you might be a kid who don't get but maybe one official visit. But you still have, as a parent, you still have the option to take your kids around the country to see the different schools and ask the questions. Everybody keeps talking about that. Like, we don't ask no questions. We just see them on TV. Mm -hmm. They might live in the projects. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, just think about all the time, the U, University of Miami. But as, as great as their program is, their campus, if you've been on their campus, their campus is terrible. <laughs> it's awful. Like, really. Right. Core Gables is <laughs> it's terrible. But they've been able to get kids for so long, but it's so many kids who end up going out, they're like, man, no, I'm out. D1, because it's D1, and if that's all they got, or they from Dade County or something, they, they grew up in Miami, so they'll mm -hmm. love it. You know, they they love it like that. But like you said, and it's Florida. You still got Florida State, Florida recruiting. So, you know, the cream of the crop not going there. So, like you said, it's a dangerous campus. You know. Dangerous. Some kids taking Southern. Have you ever seen that campus? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they need a whole redo. The kids going there, that's their last option or only option. Yeah, yeah. We have, oh, we got a caller, y'all. Hey, caller, what's your question on? Yes, sir. Top team in the SEC this year. More eight. Hmm. Hmm. The top team in the SEC. To me, I'm thinking Tennessee gonna be the top team. They got the most veteran. They got the most veteran quarterback. I mean, that's what I'm going on. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. Ah, oh, yeah, because he's going to be the, he ain't on the option. Brandon Harris is terrible at quarterback. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he might run for 1,600. He the only option they got. They definitely going to run for 1,200. Call it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Appreciate you, Carlo. We gotta go, Carlo. We gotta, we're running up against the Carlo. Appreciate you. He was asking you, get it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say no names. I'm like. <laughs> I'm not you at the package stuff. Who gonna win SEC? Exactly. Gator? He, he wanna know what you say. Honestly, uh, my cousin Outlaw gonna be mad at me when I say this because he's a diehard Bulldog fan. Oh, he might as well give it up. But uh, I'm gonna tell you this: ain't nobody gonna beat Alabama, man. My dad always say, "Don't bet against Alabama." Hey, when we come back, <laughs> man, <laughs> it's the crush, baby. <laughs> You kept asking me, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Duke Gator? They asked man a question. Yeah. 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 Duke Gator? You don't got Gator. Big Gator. Like, <laughs> you want to talk? There's, yeah, I got a question. Shall draw off the How you doing? 
You just like know to check on me. Oh, you had a question. This is about recruiting. Who said he sound like he had a package store? We did We're going to throw a curve. We're going to talk about this. Yeah, the one double A's. Black college, HBCU, we're going to talk about that. Man, I'm, yeah, dog, I, I'm going to tell you something. I thought that was going to be a whole show. Man, that, that could be a what? whole wait, show. We're going to make it down. I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm tired of you for hating on the HBCU. Because oh, yes. I, I have some parents come out say, uh, I don't want my child to go to HBCU. I said, man, I'm going to be honest with you. HBCU saved my life. Yeah. They prepared. Yeah. I know. I know some no, kids. You can't I, talk to me about that. You know. No, I, I know some kids. I know some kids. <laughs> I know some kids that went to all these other universities. I know all these other universities. And then, and then, and then they, and then they ain't doing nothing. I would never go to an HBCU. Look, we can't talk about HBCU. All the bad. That was cultural shock. Man, I'm gonna tell you something. It's before that. I call. I tell people. I say, man, sometimes, man, we we can be brainwashed. And that's, that's the problem, man. We, back in the day, like our parents, was, our grandparents didn't mind sending our kids in my church to an HBC. You got something for this two minute, this three minute segment? Yeah, my, um, my son's going to be a pharmacist, not a, not an actor. Well, that's a, mm. send him to Howard. He wanted, he wanted to go to Harvard. I can't, I can't. <laughs> he, that's where he wanted to go. Yeah. I can't. I'm not okay, sure. okay, okay. 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 Yeah, I, I mean, I'm like, that's what you want to do. But, 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 they, but they studied all the schools. My sister went to one. Yeah, yeah. And they came up with, that's the best one. Yeah. He came up with, he came up with. I cannot go to KSU. He wanted to 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 go to KSU. No, I was going. They was going to have no air. And at the beginning, I was in your room. And I was like, oh, no. No. The facilities can't use it. Okay. I'm going to tell you, I've driven my daughter already, who's 12, bigger, through, I can't pipe with you, you coming back, you know, my mom down to go to the court by Alabama State, and she's like, I'm supposed to be coming back, and we drove her by Auburn, I'm going to be like, my daughter was like, he didn't have nothing about to come in here. Just, we ain't going to have a drive through campus, because that's the only time we go somewhere, coming back, we go anywhere, we drive them by the campus, and I'm by the facilities, she's like, I can't go here. Just for a bus. <laughs> hey, we're back, man. We're going to just switch gears just a little bit, especially when we have recruiting gurus in here. And we're going to talk about uh, the plight of the HBCUs. You both guys, you, you, you run services. How much contact do you have with HBCUs? Um, I have some good contacts. They picky because they want the cream of the crop. When I give them, send them the list, you're saying, this kid, well, coach, I want this kid. And I'm like, for real? He got like 50 offers. And I had, that's when I started out early. So I had to learn to cut down my list when I sent to them. But they end up knowing I have a kid like Antoine Branch in Nashville, Tennessee. He committed to Purdue. But every black college is still, coach, let me just, t can he come visit? But um, for my other kids, I tell them to go visit it. Go see it. It's experience. It's a free education. Um, you can't knock her. I got a kid at Bethune Cookman. But till he went down to Daytona, he he didn't really know what? what it was all about. Daytona, you know, he loves it because they got discipline. Coach Sims got a good discipline down there, and the other coach, um, I can't think of his name. Uh, um, they had a good program. You know, he was a part of it. So I don't knock it. I only thing I knock about, um, you know, the black colleges, they just recruit slow. You know, HBCU. Don't say black colleges. HBCU. Okay. HBCU. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of piggyback on what Coach Clark was saying. Like, I've um, I've had some success with sending my guys to uh, HBCUs, and like I said, I'm 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 a fan of HBCUs. I'm an HBCU brother, mm -hmm. and so I'm a, I'm I'm a fan of it because my thing about it is, is that you know uh, one, it's an opportunity to get a free education. Two, is if it's you learn a lot of culture mm -hmm. um, at, at HBCU, and so. Um, so for me, a lot of times, some people say, well, some, some people kind of knock a HBCU. Um, they kind of knock it and they say, okay, well, they say, well, you know, the facilities and the travel things and everything like that. But no, my no, thing, no, so, no issues. So well, it, it is, and some say, okay, what we do with the financial aid line. And so I think, but I, <laughs> but I do, also. but my thing about it is that every HBCU not like that. And my thing about it is that if, if I think if a lot of HBCU coaches um, well, maybe maybe visit some other higher co higher college and say, okay, this is how it's ran. I think I think some of the kids will have a, a somewhat of a better experience 
Because my thing about it is you can have a great experience. You know, you can still go to the NFL, you know, from HBCU. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's about the experience. You know, I, I'm an HBCU product. I love my time at my HBCU. I think we had way better time than in other kind. I put our experience up against everybody in other socially, yeah, not athletically and facility wise, but just from a <laughs> social standpoint, nobody kicked it like we kicked it. That's nothing like the, I tell you. That's nothing like the AUC. Nah. That's nothing like nah. it. It's, it's no. It's nothing like it in in America. When and even when, when Morris Brown was around, it's nothing. It was nothing like it in America. On the wall, baby, we the best, baby, we the best. Four colleges in one, one place. Hey, man, when we come back, man. No, I'm taking over real quick. So <coughs> when Malik, when Malik was about ten, you got to come. You got to take over when we come back. Okay, hold on. When Malik was about ten years old, we would play that uh, NCAA '97. He would always make me play with Howard, <laughs> <laughs> and he would play with Florida State. Oh. And he made me play at home so he could see the cheerleaders. Florida State, hey, no way Florida State coming on uh, what's called campus. <laughs> Florida State ain't coming to Howard. Right. And I swear, I swear I can beat him too. <laughs> Not with Howard. Not with Howard. <laughs> Always <laughs> made me pick out. <laughs> Always <laughs> made me pick out. Who's the other team? And then he, he was laughing at the field the way it looked <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> on the game. He laughed at the field. He laughed at the field. All right. He laughed at the field. Boy, you stupid, bro. Y'all come do some morning radio with us one day. What time is it? Seven to nine. I know. I be trying. She be here on Friday morning. They 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 do Monday through Friday. We do Monday through Friday. Yeah, they catch me on the off days. We can do it Friday. Let us know. Let me know. Let me know. Good job, Good job. Hit that thing. What? Hit that thing. Hit that thing. Hit that thing. Hurt. Hit that thing. Hurt. Yeah. Pretty job, baby. Orange juice. Orange juice. Let's say we can do that. We'll call it this week. You come and take a visit at the church. We're strictly about relationships. We got to do that with Anna K. Swiss. Anna K. Swiss. Anna K. Swiss. We need to help, man. We need to help. Don't forget to come do a drive. We need to make a day. We need to make a day of that. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. The church is a good night. I love to win. Listen, as a hiring manager, I've got to tell you, the best job candidate isn't always the typical candidate. Sometimes they're the grads of life. Meet the grads of life. I got to get down here in the morning. and experience. An ideal fit for your company in well, the last position. Now, that's true now. White, like, 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 like all of HBCU baseball team, but they all white boys now. Right. I read, I read an article about that. One of them now. North they, 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 getting all, they getting all the scholarships. I mean, they give a lot of money away. This is the thing. Like, you, 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 like, a lot of the, 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 the back y'all had many full scholarships. The kids just don't have money. So you have to have some, you have to be able to get money. Hey, we're back. <sighs> now, we took that detour with uh, HBCU. Uh, old Bobby giving us a little flack, man. You know, we, we, we're very interactive with the show, man. You know, it's a lot of HBCU love around here. But uh, one of the next topics we were going to go to that we had on our list uh, to cover today, public versus private school. And very touchy subject here. And a lot of it had to do with... Uh, We'll get to the IMG thing a little later, but when we talk private school football, athletics versus public school, we know first and foremost the money is totally different. Facilities are totally different. You guys running recruiting services, and then Wendy has a daughter who we was academy. We get the perspective <laughs> on that. Coach Clifford, uh, this w w what do you have on this? I'm gonna be honest. And I said it in, in my notes. I actually like the private school. Mm. Um, it's because I, I remember the first time I went to a Woodward Academy game. Mm -hmm. it, it was almost like a college atmosphere. And uh, and I just I, I I just like it. You know, I, I like the diversity of it mm -hmm. and uh, the educational part of it. The I think the 
the instructional part of the curriculum at a private school is totally different than a public school. Mm -hmm. And I think the curriculum is more set um, um, to suit to get to prepare you for college. College, mm -hmm. definitely I, college. Prep. And, and uh, the reason why I say that is because I, and I, I think some public schools should step up because I, I was around some of my my high school classmates and some and this is I graduated in high school in 1999, and some of them were saying um, my my high school didn't prepare them for college. Mm. And and then so but the thing about it is, is that you know and so me as as a parent. You know, um, my my children are gonna go to private school. Mm. Let's, let's talk about the coach Clark. If if you're going from an academic standpoint, I go with the private school. Athletically, and because we keep it real on this radio show, mm -hmm. I think the private schools do an injustice to the African Americans because they sp sprinkle pick who they want to make their athletics look good. Mm. But they, that's the only reason they got them. Because if they didn't, the athletic department wouldn't even be a factor. So if you're trying to just go for academics, yes, there's no problem going to, to a smaller classroom and you're going to pay your money to go there. And guess what you're paying for, the academic part. Mm -hmm. But for we talking about athletes on this show, I'm going to a public school because at the end of the day, they only want our kids for one reason, and that's just to play football. And, and hit the, the numbers game. And sometimes I see a lot of private school kids with bad grades. Mm -hmm. Just because they go to a private school don't mean they make an honor roll. Mm -hmm. So okay. at the end of the day, what you going? Woodward Academy, I don't know nothing about it. They might be different. But a lot of these private schools are, are not stepping up to the plate either. No different than the public school. So but I stick to I like the public school yeah, better. Now, now let's get a little perspective because Wendy's daughter, is at Woodward. She's a Woodward Academy parent. Talk and I'm, about and I'm a first year Woodward Academy parent, but I can tell you the differences I see already in preparation just in the class that she takes. Some of the coaches actually, football coaches are some of her teachers. Mm -hmm. um, so they're teaching as well as coaching at those schools too. And the care, like one of her coaches, she had to go, she needed to run to stay after school. She went and met him on the football field to get some um, work done after school. And it just the, the care they take, they keep them in a reading class all the way through to get them prepared for those tests. The thing with the public school is we put so much time and energy into testing, and they don't do that in private schools. So they take all of that pressure away from them. And so what happens is those kids are there and they mentally prepare them, they academically prepare them to go ahead and be successful in college. Now, with the athletics portion, the sport that my daughter plays isn't recruited through high school sports at all. It's recruited through club. So she will play soccer there, but it's not recruited through high school, so it won't really, it, it won't matter. She, she'll be an asset to somebody. She'll be an asset to the team, but it won't be through for recruiting purposes. But everything y'all spoke on, is, I agree, is academics. We, but we, see the, see the thing about preparation, the so, preparation, because so. what he was saying is what I'm and what I'm seeing is too. Even some of the students that we are able to graduate and that I am that we do go ahead and get into a college, they may even go on a scholarship. Some of them can't be successful because we still have not academically prepared them to be successful at the next level, and that's the trouble that they're having. Even though they have support systems in place for them, some of these kids are struggling every day. I can't tell you how many kids I stay up with at night on Facetime. Helping them do work, even though they got tutors at the school. So you think if they went to a private school, it'll change? No. no, but they may have been. I'm just saying they may have been more academically ready because they have it's so still, much stuff still in on place the for them. Well, it's still on the parents. Sky don't usually ever talk, so we're gonna let Sky say something. My question is this: You said that the the kid the 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 coaches only want them at the private schools because of their color, right? But isn't that the same in the public schools? The coaches, you just said too, that the coaches want to win. So what's the difference? Because at the pri every, every African-American kid, probably the majority of them can't even afford to get in that private school. So it's not just because of the color. It's because of athleticism. Yeah, it's because of they black. But at the end of the day, they couldn't afford to get in there. So they're saying, hey, we're going to scholarship a few kids, mm -hmm. and that's, we, that's going to keep our team okay. Because what happens is a lot of the white parents are starting to say now, this doctor, this lawyer that's paying their kids tuition, but this kid over here just so came with scholarship and he so playing in front of my technically son. Technically, they can't scholarship. All right, so, so, well, hold on, let me break this down for y'all. Technically, right. they can't scholarship but they because do. of the GHSA rules. Now, what you do is, 
I'm going to tell y'all what you do, because I'm there. I grew up in what you do is school. you fill out financial aid forms. Mm -hmm. And the issue is most of the students that are there, on, that everybody's saying are scholarship in, they, they take advantage of the financial aid, and that's how they are there. It's not because of a scholarship. It's because they actually academically or financially qualify to receive money mm -hmm. from the school based on their parents' financials. But they were selected to even get in that process because what happened is the private schools sit at the parks and the recs and they pick oh, yeah, certain definitely. kids and say, hey, come on over here. Then we'll tell you this process. But, but, but the question, average kid... Those students go through the same process that everybody that, else. They have to take that. Nah. They have to, no, no, this they do. They still got to take the test. When we, when we come, <laughs> take a break, when we come back, because Coach Gator has one of the key. He has the quarterback. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about Ryan Glover's process a little bit when we come back. It's the crush. Y'all are wonderful. They do go get them, but they still got to take that. Oh, they they got to take that. They got to take that. They got to take But those are the only ones that they pick. It's the certain ones that they pick, and they go to their middle school and say, hey, this kid, oh, yeah, he academically fit us, and he can play. Because there's some kids that I got into the sea of Macaulay. They, they play the part. Man, they keep grades ain't going to get them nowhere near that school, and they going to check them out. He can't get it, even though he's a heck of an athlete. But this kid, he fits an athlete. And he can do the school well, work. So we'll about, what's, but yeah. what, what I was going to say, what's wrong with that? Right. I mean, see, it, go, it, it, it you, goes back to what I, because a lot of the time. It goes back to what I said when Coach Andrews was talking about. I'm going to give him a hard time the hard time <laughs> the rest of the show. I'm going to go back to what he said, man. At the end of the day, as a parent, man, there's nothing wrong with getting a better opportunity. Because I grew I got, up in private Because my I, thing is, my daughter can't go to Banneker. That's that's the no, neighborhood I live in. Please understand. That's not an option. Okay. I'm gonna tell you. Where I gotta drive? Never. She can't go to my school. Okay. I'm gonna tell you this, man. No. My first year in college, though. Never go to Banneker. My first year in college, man. I was not ready. I almost, I almost flunked out. So, but 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 what if it's a private school that's not good? then? Would you let them go there? No. So, but they good at academics. Hold up. No, no, we talking about they good academically private school, but they suck athletically. Would you go let them go there? I would. I would go if they suck athletically. Yes, I would because it's about my books. But if the kid is saying I still want to play ball, and I don't want to play ball for no sorry team. Well, okay. You not gonna you gonna make the best. You gonna get to school. I'm not debating that, but you still ain't gonna want to go to a sorry team. Mm -hmm. What would Academy hot right now? Yeah, right now. Like you say, right I'm, now. I'm, but see, y'all understand. But when they not hot, man, people ain't going to go over there. I'll be honest they always going to look at football Academy, first. What would Academy has a program and they have a system in place? Yes. When I think about it, even though, I'm going to tell you something, even though Ryan Glover, one of my clients, they, they, they have a coach that does recruiting, and he does a hell of a job. Mm -hmm. And I tell anybody that. My thing about it, and guess what, me and him, and guess what, me and him stay in constant communication to get that kid they to where he's supposed to get to. And they they send them to all kind of testing, preparation. Man, I'm telling you, man. We're with Kelly, man. They you got still got to qualify man. Like, to get I'm not debating. I live in the country. Saying. I live in the country. Don't think I'm not thinking about sending my kids to Kelly when they get in high school. Mm -hmm. Well, they're down. They're going to pick them up. They got grade. Grade. I live in the hey, country. They're going to start pick them up right at the college park market. I'm tripped out when I'm going to get in the country. That's going to be up. Yeah, I know. They bring that big red bus to Y'all got six good minutes. What would it get? I'm in now. <laughs> the rest of them too. And they got a strong alumni base too. They got a strong it's mandatory, alumni it's mandatory base. you get money. The money is strong. The money is long over there. Real long. 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 Coming back. Oh. Y'all yeah, had a good debate tonight. There you go. Hey, man, we're back, man. Hey, <laughs> once again, man, always spirit of conversation when we talk about this process, man, this recruit, man. Understand this, y'all, man. We, we trying to help parents, kids, everybody, man. We trying to get everybody to get to school, man, get this money, man. Because it, it's out, though. Mm -hmm. Now, before we left, you know, we're, we're talking about Woodward Academy. So everybody knows Ryan Glover, senior quarterback uh, that's going to Colorado State. That's at Woodward Academy. He's one of uh, Coach Clifford Browning's uh, clients. I think Ryan could have probably, I mean, clearly he could play to any high school, but they chose Woodward Academy because I, I guess his family wanted the best education <coughs> for him and make sure he was prepared for college. 
See, see, I'm gonna tell you. See, like Ryan, Ryan's situation, man. He's one. He's he's a heck of a quarterback. Heck of a kid. Heck of a quarterback. Mm -hmm. he, he, he is. And the thing about this, you gotta remember, Ryan played uh, um, little league football for Ben Hill. Right. So, so my thing about it is, is that, but you know, and he sat, he sat, he sat behind another quarterback for two years, and then again when he got his opportunity. But my thing about it is, is that, is that when, when talk, when you talk to Ryan on the phone, or you meet him in person, you can, and I'm not, I'm not saying this doesn't happen at public school, but I'm talking about the difference between some of my public school kids and my private school kids. When I tell you, he knows how to, and it, it, it has something to do with his dad too. But he knows how to hold a, a professional conversation. That, 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 those are some of the things that, that colleges would, would say about him. You know, mm -hmm. um, he, he knows how to answer. You know, every question he answers every question correctly. He knows what to say. He pronunciates his words correctly. And my, and, and I might even say that wrong. But the thing about this, and, 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 but you know. Now I'm, I'm, and I'm a puppet school product, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get Ryan to answer for you next time. <laughs> but uh, you know, just like I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I I I think Woodward Academy, and even his little brother go to his little brother and sister go to Woodward Academy, and um, and and and, and you can just tell, like like um, Malcolm Can um, Malcolm M Malcolm Cunningham's son, he went to GAC, and just I I, I just tell people, I said just just me dealing with. My parents and my kids, and you know, from the private school, from, from, from the private school, um, I, I, I'm finding that th those kids are, when they go when they go to college, they are actually, I feel like they're more they're having they're actually college ready. And I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I think part of it is too, like what I'm learning just from me being over this little amount of time, is that they uh, teach the students to advocate for themselves. <clears throat> which is something that we don't do and I, I work at a, pri a public school it's not something we really promote and push in public schools those students learn to advocate for themselves they want you know if you have an issue if there's something wrong they want the student to come and talk to the mm -hmm. teacher first versus the parent mm -hmm. contacting and that's there's a big push for that mm -hmm. um, a lot of times when they um, give grades they give you a narrative with their grades so it's not just hey they got a B, a C yeah. or they got an L there's a narrative that comes along with it it talks to you about your child and the things that those teachers see in your child and growth and things like that we don't we don't get to do that we don't have the time to do it and we don't we have to see too many students to do it in a public school setting and so i looked at it and, and what you're saying is it's, it's a it's a service for the kids it, it helps them to be better to be uh better citizens when they go out or even when they go off to college it helps them to do those things that they need to do without their parents we handicap a lot of our kids in the public school system. I'm going to be honest with you. They get out and they can't function anymore. They don't know how to function outside of those walls of the school when we've handled everything for them and their parents have handled everything for them. And then, and then what happens a lot of times when, when, it, when you deal with situations that you'll see a kid, and, and I'm, I'm just being honest, Coach Clark, if you, I'm just, I'm just and I, because I've, I've been doing this for a while, if you see some of the kids that go to private school, they're able to handle, they're able to handle a a harder major, an engineering major. But you see some of the kids that come from public school say, "Well, coach, well, I'm I'm going, I'm going to the NFL anyway, so I'm going to go major in basketball, weed, you know, or or something." So, 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 so what, what, what I'm saying is that I'm not I'm not knocking public schools. I'm not. It's a lot of great public schools, and there's nothing wrong. I think Northview <laughs> Northview High School is one. It's a great public school, you know, and, and yeah, it's Fulton County, and they have some of the <laughs> highest academic standards. You know, um, but my thing, I'm not saying nothing wrong with public, public school, but I just said as far as the curriculum and the structure that children get at a, at a private school, and I think it helps, it helps a kid, especially being an athlete, being able to balance when you get to college. I think it prepares you better when you get to college, in my opinion. Hey, well, <laughs> Coach Clark is speechless on that. No, I'm not, right I'm not speechless. I was just waiting. I thought you was about to say something. No, we're good. I we're, just, we're I good. just, I just feel like that. Um, they just because of the cherry picking. I'm not saying that a private school is not great. It is great. You get a lot. That's what you're paying for. At the end of the day, so you're paying for that small classroom. You're paying for all the extra tools that um, that you all said. But you know, if I had to pick. 
you know, you still got to do it. What well, we said from the beginning, as a parent, my daughter go to Stevenson High School. They say that's one of the worst high schools in the Cad County, and she got a 3.3. At the end of the day, I, I just think that you just can't say because of where a high school is, it's bad. You got to do what you got to do regardless because every kid don't even get the opportunity to go to these private schools because the private schools don't want them anyway. They just going to cherry pick the few that's going to help them win athletically. And I've seen a lot of private school kids get to college they think they too privileged. They can't make it because they haven't been. They haven't been able to socially transition. So I've Man. seen them get to college, socially and they out. In, they out in two years because they drinking, sexing, doing everything in the world because they didn't get to do that in private school. So it goes both ways. Yeah, they do that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? The private school too. kids think they super privileged. Think they better than everybody, and then at the end of the day, they they not good teammates either. Hey, again. Always spirited conversation when we're talking uh, the process and we're talking recruiting, man. Hey, that's our show, man. Next week, next Wednesday, we back at it again, man. It's the crush, baby. We going. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Top notch opportunities. Hey, man. Good show, man. Hey, appreciate y'all. We out. Tune in next week. Same time, same channel. I used to get into a lot of fights about that. Appreciate y'all, man. How people always felt like since we went to private school, we felt like we was better than other people. Rare Radio. Check us out. Like that. Every Wednesday. But they hadn't even 